Scott Mitchell. I'm the director of the Orange Coast College Planetarium. Uh, we're the newest building on the OCC campus. Uh, we're in Costa Mesa. Uh, we opened on March 22nd was our uh, dedication ceremony, ribbon cutting, and uh, all of the, uh, the pomp and circumstance uh, that a $25 million planetarium deserves. Um, yeah, it's a, a really, really incredible building. I'm just going to kind of talk about some of the things that uh, we you know, have available to uh, the people that come and visit, uh, some of the shows and uh, public events that we're doing, and uh, plans for the future. So, uh, of course, this is the exterior of our building uh, on campus. Uh, you can see the uh, tall part in the back is the uh, tower for our focal pendulum. We've got a huge lobby that's just glass all the way around, uh, big windows to let in lots of natural light. Uh, and then of course in the center is our 50-foot uh, diameter uh, state-of-the-art planetarium dome. So uh, on the right you can see the Focal Pendulum, uh, which is a tool that demonstrates the rotation of the Earth. Uh, French physicist Leon Foucault uh, in Paris, France in the 1800s. Uh, develops this apparatus as a way to demonstrate that the Earth is rotating. Uh, the pendulum itself swings back and forth in a fixed plane, uh, always in the same direction, and the Earth rotates underneath it, uh, which causes it to appear to us, as we stand on the Earth, uh, to process around in a circle. Uh, our pendulum here uh, or in uh, Costa Mesa, uh, since we're at about 33.7 degrees north latitude, uh, goes around in uh, full procession, 360 degrees approximately every 43 hours. Uh, since it's knocking over pins on either side of its swing, it takes about 22 hours to knock them all down. The procession period depends very much on the latitude at the North Pole. It would take exactly 24 hours to go all the way around. At the equator, it wouldn't go around at all. And at the South Pole, it's 24 hours again, but counterclockwise rather than clockwise. It's a really, really uh, popular exhibit. Uh, kind of a, a mystery to me why it was so popular. To me, it just kind of was kind of boring. But uh, everybody crowds around it and loves to stare at it, and they cheer when it knocks the pins over. So, uh, of course, they've got one uh, at the Griffith Observatory. Uh, ours is much newer and shinier, uh, but I don't want to brag that much. <laughs> Uh, on the other picture on the left-hand side is from an event that we did back in January, kind of a soft opening event for the total lunar eclipse. We had several telescopes out, we invited the public and put on a, just a, a short little show uh, talking about the moon, what was actually happening uh, you know, with the eclipse, why eclipses happen, uh, and then using the planetarium we were able to actually watch the eclipse from the surface of the moon near the Apollo 15 lander. So. That was, a, I thought, a fun touch. So this is the, uh, on the right is another image of the lobby. You can see the pendulum uh, kind of in the back there, the kind of blown out circle. Uh, in the foreground is our NOAA Science on a Sphere exhibit. Uh, NOAA is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and they provided this uh, exhibit. It's essentially a six-foot carbon fiber sphere that hangs from the ceiling and we can project basically whatever we want onto it. Normally we're showing the Earth with real-time clouds. We can show real-time wind speed, ocean currents, uh, flight patterns, droughts, carbon emissions, all kinds of really, really cool data sets compiled by NOAA. Uh, we can show you know, the moon, the other planets of the solar system. It's a, a really good tool for uh, teaching about uh, the environment, climate change, um, plate tectonics. Uh, I have several faculty members from all over campus just itching to get in and bring their classes to use it. Uh, I've got history professors that have data sets that we can project onto the sphere that show the spread of the Black Plague. I've got a geology professor that uh, was almost wetting himself to show his students the uh, data set that shows the magnetic declination of the Earth and how the magnetic poles change over time. Uh, so lots and lots of really, really cool things that we can do on the science atmosphere. Uh, not pictured down uh, the hallway towards the entrance to the theater, we have four science on a sphere explorer stations, which run basically the same software, but they're on a flat touchscreen. 
We have four touchscreen interfaces that do Science on a Sphere Explorer, which is essentially the same software, but it allows people to interact with it on their own. So we can do a full lecture with you know, uh, 50 people around the actual globe, talk about you know, whatever the, you know, the class is interested in, and then we can break them up into groups, send them over towards the Explorer stations, and they can explore the exact same data sets on their own. They can you know, zoom in, look at things up close, uh, we can put together lessons for them to you know, find and answer questions uh, about all kinds of things for you know, the ocean, volcanic and geologic activity, atmosphere, uh, even the planets of our solar system, uh, satellites. There is really a ton of stuff. It's a very, very versatile uh, piece of software. Over 200 different data sets that we can show uh, on the Science of Sphere and the Science on Sphere Explorer. The other image on the left is of the interior of the planetarium. It, uh, the pictures really, of course, don't do it justice. It's very difficult to photograph uh, in that room because it has to be so dark. But we have a 50-foot diameter aluminum dome that is lit by six very powerful Sony laser phosphor projectors, which fill the entire dome with uh, 8K resolution video and imagery. And it allows us to do a lot of really, really cool things for visitors of all ages. Uh, we had our very first field trip just Friday of last week. A group of eighth graders came and took a tour through the solar system. Uh, our second one is going to be on Monday. They're going to learn about the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun. And then on Tuesday, we've got another class coming uh, that'll be looking at uh, the jobs of astronauts and astronomers and how we you know, use telescopes and research to learn things about our universe. So the software that we run inside the planetarium is called Digistar 6, and it allows us to basically create a scientifically accurate 3D model of the entire visible universe. We can pull actual real data sets from you know, the Sloan Digital Sky Survey and just fill the dome with other galaxies and fly around through them, explore, you know, galaxy clusters, talk about dark matter, the expansion of the universe. We can fly to all kinds of different places in our own galaxy. There are built-in databases full of exoplanets from the Kepler mission. Uh, each one of the exoplanets has been painstakingly uh, illustrated by artists, and so we can fly to these exoplanets and actually see what their surfaces might look like. Um, and of course, in our own solar system where we have much more information, uh, the Earth, we have you know, 3D terrain models so you can fly right through the Grand Canyon or look up at Mount Everest. Uh, the same goes for Mars and the Moon. We can you know, fly right up close to uh, Olympus Mons or through the Mariner Valley. We can land on the Moon next to uh, Apollo capsules and uh, all kinds of really, really cool things. Uh, our programs that we do for the public, which are on weekends, Friday nights at 7 o'clock, and then Saturday and Sunday at 11, 12, 30, and 2. Um, usually we'll introduce the program with a, a live presentation done by me or one of my student staff, uh, and then a approximately 30 minute full dome uh, multimedia presentation. And then we finish up every show with a tour of the night sky that you'd be able to see from a much, much darker place uh, than Costa Mesa that night. Um, it's, it's no fun with the light pollution on, so usually I ignore the light pollution so that we can see you know, more than five stars in Orion. Um, but it, uh, it allows us to kind of let the audience take something home after every show so that they can go out and even if they can only see Mars or Sirius, then it's, it's something that they might not have been able to do before. So the next couple of uh, slides I've got are just trailers for some of the shows that we're doing. Uh, this is Explore, and it was kind of our premiere show that we showed on the, the night of the grand opening on March 22nd. Since the dawn of humanity, we have gazed up at the stars, dreaming one day perhaps to reach them. And if we are to outlive our planet, we will need to make this dream a reality. With modern technology, we can travel beyond Earth's atmosphere. But this isn't all new science. We are benefiting from the discoveries of generations of scientists, 
reaching back into history. wondered how a spacecraft can navigate accurately to a space station traveling at 20 times the speed of sound. skills gained from the missions to the International Space Station have paved the way for the next historic step for human space travel, to land on another planet, Mars. Premiere show. Uh, I don't know if the sound is loud enough for everybody to hear, but uh, it focuses on how our perceptions of the universe have changed drastically uh, over the course of history, starting with you know, seeing just the lights in the sky, not really understanding what they were, uh, ancient people believing that the stars were affixed to crystal spheres that rotated around the Earth, uh, and that the sun and the moon, uh, well, that the Sun and all of the other planets orbited around the Earth, how Copernicus, uh, Galileo, and Kepler changed that model to put the Sun in the center of the solar system, um, and then how Kepler's laws allow us to calculate the you know, orbital parameters that we need to be able to send missions to the Moon, send people even further out uh, to Mars someday. So it's a, a really, really just visually impressive program. Uh, of course, a, a slide isn't going to do it justice. Uh, this is our uh, kids' show, uh, which is at 11 and 2 on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, it's called Earth, Moon, and Sun, and it's uh, just a really fun way to engage kids uh, to learn about the phases of the moon, seasons, eclipses, uh, just the motion in the sky that we all kind of take for granted, that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, that the stars change depending on what season we're in as we orbit the sun. Uh, and it's all presented through the lens of Native American folklore. Uh, the coyote is supposed to be a kind of a trickster character uh, in that folklore, and so he uh, messes a lot of things up, addresses a lot of misconceptions, like uh, that the phases of the moon are caused by the moon moving in and out of the Earth's shadow, um, you know, things like that. They, you know, people that don't really have a lot of background in astronomy might go in thinking, uh, and it addresses those in a, a really just kind of fun and engaging way. Uh, it's one of our more hands-on programs. Uh, at the beginning in the, the live intro part, we want to compare the size of the sun and the moon, so I uh, invite the entire audience to help me lasso the sun and drag it 93 million miles closer to us uh, before deciding as the dome turns bright red that it was a terrible idea and we're all gonna die. Uh, so I like to, to have fun with, uh, with stuff like that. Let's see, a Oh yeah, so uh, the Explore show, I think we've got uh, 
10 and up uh, is the recommended ages. Uh, this one is uh, ages 6 to 12. But even then, you know, it's I really like watching it. Uh, so it's it's just a really fun program, and I think probably anybody that uh, comes in will take something away from it, even if you know you think you know quite a bit about astronomy. Um, this one is uh, we'll show this one. Uh, we just just got this program. Uh, I got it running on Tuesday. Uh, it's called Capcom Go, and it's the Apollo story. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long range exploration of space. In 1961, John F. Kennedy set the goal to send a human to the moon. Discover the story of how we did it. Go, the Apollo story. Obviously, the, um, the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission uh, is uh, this July, so uh, we got this one. This is a brand, brand new show. They, uh, it was, you know, world premiere was just a couple of weeks ago, so uh, we got it on the ground floor. It's a really just visually very impressive show. It talks about all of the lead up through the space race. Uh, to the actual landing and then through the rest of the Apollo missions uh, and our plans to hopefully go back to the moon in the not too distant future. The, uh, so our dedication ceremony was on uh, March 22nd. We had you know, uh, local representatives, uh, you know, lots and lots of VIPs coming to help dedicate the building. We really want to be able to give back to uh, three kind of main groups in our community because um, the you know, as a community college we rely very very much on the, uh, the people around us uh, and you know the college receives a, a lot of uh, great benefits from uh, our community and so the planetarium is kind of our way to give back uh, we of course will be addressing uh, the general public with, with our public programs on weekends and then special events for eclipses and um, you know, transits, uh, things like that, um, the anniversary of uh, Apollo. Um, and so that's just free for uh, you know, anybody to come in and purchase a ticket and take in a star show. Uh, we have our field trip programs for K through 12 students uh, from uh, as far out as, uh, I've got a school from Long Beach that wants to, to come all the way down here to see us. So uh, very, very ambitious. Uh, field trip program. Uh, we're working with the Orange County Department of Education to develop standards-based programming so that a teacher can come in and basically just check off a whole lot of boxes, uh, you know, saying that the planetarium has addressed all of these different standards that they uh, are required to teach with the, the California State Standards. Um, and then, of course, the third group that we want to address is um, just the, the campus community. Uh, the planetarium is a very, very useful tool for lots and lots of different departments, not just the astronomy department, uh, although of course they'll probably use it the most, uh, given that we don't have a really great dark sky in Costa Mesa. Uh, the planetarium is a really great opportunity for the students to be able to you know, learn how to find things in the sky, learn how to measure things in the sky, uh, and a great way to just visualize things that you can't really do on a uh, flat screen. Uh, but of course, 
we're definitely not limited to astronomy. There are programs that uh, I plan to get for the dome that talk about everything from marine ecology, botany, uh, paleontology, uh, weather, all kinds of uh, things that we can do in the dome. It's definitely not limited to astronomy anymore. And uh, on top of that, we can create our own content very easily uh, with you know a two hundred dollar GoPro camera. We can create full dome video. Uh, one of the marine science professors takes a field trip to Baja California every year uh, to go gray whale watching, and I'm going to give them a three sixty GoPro that they can just stick in the water next to the whales, and then we can put that on the dome uh, and you know feel basically like you're immersed. Uh, in this environment, swimming with the whales. Um, and then of course we can create a lot of you know, custom astronomy content. Uh, our campus marketing department and videographer have been doing really great jobs kind of experimenting with this new medium of 360 degree video. Uh, I've been talking to people from the art department. Uh, I've got a group, of, uh, a dance class that's gonna come and perform in the lobby. Uh, in a couple of weeks. So it really is a, a huge multidisciplinary facility and I don't want to keep anybody out, uh, which is getting to be a scheduling problem, but that's that's my problem. So I think we can we'll get, we can play this one, this one just 30 seconds. This is just a commercial that we shot for the, the building. Imagine a place where children explore the mysteries of the universe where college students navigate new worlds of opportunities in science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Where families and friends encounter galaxies millions of light years away. Imagine a world-class space to discover infinite possibilities. The Orange Coast College Planetarium. Visit our website for showtimes and ticket information. So that uh, actually reminded me of a couple of different things that I didn't uh, mention. Uh, you know, with this building being $25 million, uh, we ought to have some really cool toys in there. The, even the windows are special. Uh, since our lobby is essentially all windows, uh, it would ordinarily be very difficult to project onto the science on a sphere uh, and not have it appear really washed out and not look very good. Uh, so every single pane of glass in the entire building is electrochromic, which means that with the push of a button, I can darken all of the windows in the building uh, you know, and tint them to make a, you know, a nice dark environment so that we can see the projection even in the middle of the day. Uh, the floors even uh, have two feet of space underneath them. You can pull up the tiles so we can run power and data uh, underneath the floors so there's no you know, tripping hazards, extension cords all over the floor, and we can run it straight back up to you know, illuminate uh, display cases for uh, exhibits. Uh, if we want to run, you know, put big monitors and TVs in the lobby, we can run all of the data for those underneath the floor. Uh, there's plans, hopefully by next fall, to install a uh, telescope farm just out on the lawn in front of the planetarium uh, where we'll have several, like 10 is the plan right now, uh, just permanent piers fixed to the ground uh, so that the astronomy students don't have to load tripods around. They just put the, the OTA on top of the, the mount and it's already aligned and they can just get right to observing. Uh, it really cuts down on the amount of equipment they have to carry around. And then we have a big, I uh, can't remember the exact size, uh, but a hydrogen alpha um, solar telescope that will go in its own small observatory dome uh, out there too, so that we can you know, put that on the output from that onto a big monitor. We can show it inside the planetarium dome if we want to, uh, and it'll really make it a, a very, very powerful tool for the astronomy students and for the planetarium when we have. Uh, you know, school field trips coming, they can, you know, in addition to being able to see the things on the globe, uh, look at the focal pendulum, they can go outside and, you know, look at the, the sun through the solar telescopes. So, yeah, lots of really, really cool things that we've, um, yeah, so that's kind of what, uh, what we've got going on right now. We're planning uh, several events for uh, the anniversary of the Apollo landing and uh, as, you know, other things come up. Uh, we'll definitely be uh, advertising those too. But um, yeah, normal uh, shows right now that we're running uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 
Uh, you can get the tickets right on our website already, uh, orangecoastcollege.edu slash OCC Planetarium. Um, yeah, I've got uh, brochures that are uh, on the table in the back there that uh, you can feel free to grab. And I think that's, uh, that's all I've got. So questions? Yeah, how about we'll start? Uh, yeah, we'll start right here. Yeah, so how about... <laughs> yeah, so uh, the question is how did, uh, how did the planetarium come up with uh, $25 million to uh, build the facility? Um, 20 million of it came from a uh, tax bond, uh, Measure M, which I think passed back in 2016, uh, supplied uh, uh, all of the community colleges in the state of California with funding. Uh, OCC put 20 million of it towards the uh, construction of this facility. And then uh, through private fundraising, we were able to raise another $5 million to uh, you know, round out the corners. I wondered if you have like memberships where you can have an annual membership to the planetarium. Uh, yeah, so the question is, do we have uh, annual memberships? Uh, at the moment, they're not set up yet, but there's a, uh, <laughs> there's a button on our website that if you click it, it says memberships coming soon. So uh, we're definitely working on it and that will hopefully be active uh, by the end of May, if, uh, if I can find the time to work on it. <laughs> yeah, Phantom of the Universe is a, a really cool program. Uh, it's produced uh, in part by CERN, uh, the, the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland, to you know, talk about the search for dark matter uh, and you know, what this you know, mysterious particle might be, since there's no way to detect it outside of looking at how it affects things through gravity. Uh, it's a really, really cool program that's uh, definitely our most scientifically advanced, I'll say. Um, you know, we've got shows that run for you know, elementary school, middle schoolers, high schoolers, but this one is uh, good for, actually we've got uh, higher level astronomy classes coming in a couple of weeks to see the same show. Uh, so it's uh, a really, really cool program, and the best part was that it was distributed entirely free by the European Southern Observatory. So. Thank you, ESL. Right, so the, the planetarium at Griffith has a, a hybrid system with a, an optomechanical star ball, the giant machine mm -hmm. in the middle of the room uh, that has fiber optic lights to project a very, very gorgeous, very crisp star field with literally infinite contrast between the stars. Um, unfortunately, uh, with an optomechanical system like that, the night sky is the only thing you can do with it. You can put up gorgeous pinpoint, very bright stars, but you can rotate them and that's about it with the digital system. So we don't have a star ball. Uh, ours is powered by six big laser phosphor digital projectors around the side, around the, side, yep, around the perimeter uh, that shoot across and each one does a different segment of the dome. Uh, but it allows us to put up a, you know, a really, really gorgeous night sky, not quite as good as we would have been able to get with an optomechanical system, uh, but still uh, really, really good resolution, uh, very high contrast, and we can push a button and pick up off of the Earth and fly to Mars. How many people can you fit in the planetarium auditorium? Excellent question. We have seating for 125 inside the planetarium. Okay. And, and what about that Apollo um, presentation? Is that going to be a show soon, or...? Yes, so these, uh, the two shows that we're running right now, Explore and Earth and Sun, uh, will run through the end of June, and then we'll replace uh, Explore with Capcom Go, which is our Apollo show, and then uh, Earth, Moon, and Sun will be replaced with uh, a program called Magic Treehouse Space Mission. I don't know if anybody has uh, grandkids who absolutely adore the Magic Treehouse book series, uh, but it's a very, very popular book series. Every third grader in the country reads them. Thank you uh, very much. Yeah, you're very welcome.